here's a guy I saw five years ago in Minneapolis. He was working at a little comedy club there. And uh, I said to myself, here's a guy you gotta watch. In fact, you can't miss him, okay? <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Louis Anderson, okay, Louis. <laughs> How you doing? Listen, I can't stay long. I'm in between meals, so bear with me on this. <laughs> Let me move that so you can see me. <laughs> yeah, I live out in California where there are only three fat people. And they have us on eight-hour shifts, so it works out. I tried to get in that California living. I tried the beach life. Every time I'd lay down, people would push me back into the water. <laughs> Hurry up, he's dying. <laughs> I was harpooned six times. And, and the bums down at the beach always coming up to me. Hey, buddy, could you help me out with the sandwich? <laughs> well, sure, where is it? <laughs> well, it originally brought me out there with the Olympics. I don't know if you recognize me. <laughs> Hula hoop contest. <laughs> Tried all the events, tried the pole vault, drove that sucker right in the ground. I did a good thing, though. I straightened out those uneven parallel bars. Broad jump, killed her. Oh, sorry, I'm sweating, but if I don't, I'll explode. Well, let's face it, if I didn't do these fat jokes, you guys would sit out there going, do you think he knows he's that big? Like I woke up one morning, oh no. <laughs> I was mean to my brother, I'll tell you. I had older brothers, that's where I learned it. They were cruel to me. They always take a landmark and terrify you with it. You're four years old. Louie! See that swamp over there? Yeah. There's a monster in it. There is? Well, it's a good thing we're over here. <laughs> well, its arms could reach you. So for years, I walked way around that swamp. <laughs> so I got a little older and a little smarter and a little brother. <laughs> Tommy! See that swamp over there? <laughs> That's where your real parents live. <laughs> Can't you see their eyes bugging out from here? You ever get scratched by an animal when you're little? Your brother goes, uh-oh, what? Rabies. <laughs> One of those. Well, first you start foaming at the mouth. Then they take a needle about 75 feet long. <laughs> and they shove it in and out of your eye 50 or 60 times. <laughs> you run home to your mom. This is rabies. I'll be foaming. There's a big... Are you on dope? <laughs> Yeah, brothers are great like that. I have also have a brother who's crazy. A lot of people don't admit they have crazy people in their family, but they're coming from somewhere. <laughs> There's a one couple in Minnesota having them all. Oh, good, another one. <laughs> kids are different nowadays. You got the kids into the punk thing. That's my great. I love that. Man. Don't be too hard on them. Because, you know, in 10 years, they're going to have kids. And those kids will find those pictures. <laughs> and if they have any little brothers or sisters, this is what your real mom and dad. <laughs> You're going to have a mohawk and a spike through your head. <laughs> he says, I'm going to have a mohawk and a spike through my Are you on dope? <laughs> well, then give me some. <laughs> Thank you very much again, Ryan.
It's nice to be here. Nice to be home. How many dads here tonight? A lot of dads? Applaud if you're a dad. Yeah. My dad was the kind of guy who didn't like people. <laughs> We'd be in the family car driving down the street, and my dad would spot somebody walking down the street that was a little different. Oh, he'd slow that car down. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> We're crying out loud. Get my rifle. <laughs> or he'd say things that made no sense to us or your kids in the back seat. You know, if I was the last person on earth, some moron would turn left in front of me. <laughs> what? And whenever he'd say that to him, I was the last person on earth, he'd always turn to your brother and go, wish he was, don't you? <laughs> and my dad, I heard that. You kids wanna walk home from here? Well, yeah, we're in the garage. <laughs> don't get smart with me. That was my favorite, don't get smart with me. Weren't you always tempted to go, huh? <laughs> How's this, Dad? Am I acting stupid enough for you? <laughs> and then they would threaten you. I'll drive you 20 miles and drop you off. <laughs> Don't forget that's how far I had to walk to school every damn day. <laughs> and my brother would chime in, and you didn't have any shoes either, did you, Dad? <laughs> that's right, when I was a kid, they didn't have children. What are we gonna say to our kid? Huh? I didn't get cable till I was 12. Because <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong impression of my dad. You know? He never hit us, <laughs> carried a gun. <laughs> well, he never shot us. He just... <laughs> Very effective, I'll tell you. I loved Hasley, my parents. Had a younger brother, <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> you know what I mean if you have a younger brother or sister? Because you don't have to hit them. You just get up in the morning, go down to breakfast, look across the table, do this. <laughs> you do that long enough, <laughs> you'll hear this every time. Mom. <laughs> Louis looking at me again. <laughs> and you love that. You go, oh, is it against the law to look at people? <laughs> look at mom. Does this bother you? <laughs> you keep it up, keep it up. All of a sudden. Jesus, he home today? <laughs> now I'm in trouble. Then you do this, your brother, oh, when I get you outside. <laughs> now my brother, he's the last kid in the family. <laughs> He gets mad, he's gotta find people in the street. <laughs> hey, buddy! <laughs> then after breakfast, we'd have to clean the room. Well, I was oldest, so I made up my own rules. <laughs> All right, I'm oldest, so I'm in charge. <laughs> this area where I'll be standing, that's the area I'll be cleaning. <laughs> The rest of this filthy pig pen is yours. <laughs> oh yeah, mom told me to tell you today. You're adopted. 
They were frog face people. I saw them drop you off. <laughs> that eyes that bugged out your hair. They told me when you turn 13, your eyes are gonna pop out of your head. The only cure is to tape them down at night with this masking tape. <laughs> My brother would tape his eyes down. <laughs> My mom would come in in the morning. <laughs> what the hell's going on? <laughs> oh, I think he's on dope, mother. <laughs> well, that's all she needed to hear. She'd go and rip that tape off his eyes. <laughs> My brother would wake up. Tried to explain it, but in that crying, talking voice, my eyes are gonna Are you on dope? Of course he is, he can't even complete a sentence. I was mean to my brother. Tommy. Poor Tommy. <laughs> Any Tommies out there? I was no bully, though. You remember those kids? Who used to come up to you and put you in a headlock for no reason? <laughs> Got you in a headlock. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, nothing. <laughs> well, all right, then. <laughs> These guys are growing up now. They come up, do you want me to lift your car? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, all right, then. <laughs> Tough guys, because we're all wimps on the inside. You're home alone, you hear a noise. <laughs> you're with somebody, you're a whole other person. All right, who the hell? You know what people are really terrified of? <laughs> bats. You ever see anyone not flinch when a bat flew into their face? <laughs> you know, just stand there, let the bat go. <laughs> well, that bat comes here. <laughs> Did you see that thing? Six foot wingspan on that bat. Doberman on its back. Because <laughs> we're all afraid of the same thing. That bat getting caught in our hair, flapping on our forehead. Because <laughs> who's going to take it off, eh? Could you get the bat? <laughs> Only your mother could. Get off my son, damn it. I told you, no bats in here. I know he screws up my hair. Everybody always hates that. Oh, how's my hair look? Does it look all right now? Yeah, you know, like you guys would tell me. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Big gulp. <laughs> my mom was tough. Everybody's mom is tough, basically. You never ran home and got your dad. <laughs> you always got your mom. You could have a hundred kids after you with rifles. <laughs> you get your mom, they find out, get out of here, he's getting his mom! <laughs> she killed that bat yesterday! <laughs> My mom's funny. My mom's a window monitor. You know what that is? She hears a car door slam. The Johnsons are home. <laughs> oh, they're rich, you know. <laughs> oh, there's that Henderson clan. <laughs> they're real poor. 
They're all on dope. <laughs> you ask your mom, too, you go, how do you know that stuff? She gives you that look like she's got inside information. <laughs> And then your dad gets involved. Oh, yeah, Louie, the FBI, they don't even question people anymore. They call your mother up. <laughs> Have a nice Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. <laughs> That's my mom's favorite holiday, because she always gets to invite the aunt and uncle everyone hates. And you know this by what your dad says when he walks out of the bedroom and sees him. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'll be in the garage. <laughs> well, they never bring anything except that tub of lime green jello <laughs> with the carrot shredded in the top. <laughs> What'd your aquarium freeze up? Eat some of that. I'll keep your eyes from bugging out today. I'm far. <laughs> your brother ever in your chair at the meal? Everybody has their chair. Your brother gets in yours. I don't care how old you are. Get on. You My mom always makes too much food, like one item especially, you know, like seven or eight hundred pounds of sweet potatoes. <laughs> so she's got to push it during the meal. <laughs> Did you get some sweet potatoes? <laughs> They're sweet potatoes. <laughs> They're hot. <laughs> it's more in the oven. Some in the garage. <laughs> the rest are at the Johnsons. <laughs> Your dad can only take this so long. Shut up! <laughs> Give me some of those. Did you get a hot biscuit? <laughs> There's hot biscuit. <laughs> Do you ever finish the meal? You're eating the dessert. All of a sudden, your mom stands up. The cranberries! <laughs> Get them! They're on the bottom shelf. <laughs> you know you're getting older when the first thing you do after you're done eating is look for a place to lay down. <laughs> I got the coach! I got the coach! Take it, Dad. <laughs> and my mom waits until my dad's real comfortable, and then she goes, could you take them home? Louie, come with me so I don't hurt him. <laughs> He's mean to him, too. He asks him those horrible questions. Your son get out of prison yet? <laughs> dad. Well, he tries to apologize to him, but it's just not in my dad, you know, as he's dropping him off. Well, uh... Throw that jello out on the lawn, too. <laughs> it's a good thing my mom doesn't drive him home. No, <laughs> she's the worst driver. She drives in that imaginary lane. <laughs> what are we doing over here, Mom? <laughs> well, no one's in it. You're a horrible driver, you know that? I've never had an accident. <laughs> yeah, you've caused a lot of them, though. <laughs> She's always got that Tupperware lunch wherever she goes. She's always adjusting the rearview mirror. And occasionally she does an interesting thing. She restarts the car. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
this is a noise that could bring your dad out of a coma. What the hell's going on out there? The third flywheel, you chewed up this chair! What'd he say? He said we should get going, Mom. Your mom ever do this, point out things that make no sense to you? Shirley's daughter works in that building. <laughs> Who's Shirley, mom? Oh, you met her once, you were three. It was your birthday, she gave you those little cowboy boots. Oh, look, there's the freeway. Maybe I should pop on there. Well, then maybe I should pop out here. I promise I won't stop this time. She gets on that ramp. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. your mom. Pal, what the hell is the problem? <laughs> well, what would you do? It's my mom. You want some sweet potatoes? <laughs> what did he say? He said we should get going, Mom. Is your father following me? Oh, look, a garage sale. <laughs> I'm not going in. Oh, come on in. You might find a shirt. <laughs> what, does Raymond Burr live here? <laughs> I don't think so. So you decide to wait in the car, which is a mistake. But after five minutes, you've gone through the glove box. You start looking at your watch. Five minutes she's been in there. What the hell can she be doing in there for five minutes? People are going, are you, are you pulling out? No! What would I be sitting over here for? And people have stopped, gone in, bought stuff, come out, left. They came after you did. You're asking, have you seen her? Is my mom in there? A nutty looking, you know, real goofy looking. Got a bowl of sweet potatoes with her. Pretty soon you have to go in, but you can't yell out loud. You have to do that yelling with your mouth closed. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in here? <laughs> I'm out there for a half hour. People are driving around. You park here. I'm not going anywhere. Well, what could you be possibly doing in here? Shirley lives here. <laughs> oh, hi. Saw where your daughter works. <laughs> Thanks for the boots. And my mom has that disease, she has to buy something. Get me that toaster. It's broken. It's only a quarter. <laughs> the cord's worth a quarter. Yeah, I'll remember that next. The sweet potatoes for it? <laughs> Your dad doesn't negotiate. <laughs> How much for this tree here without any limbs?
And that's $35. What? <laughs> what, are you gonna come over and decorate it for us? <laughs> then he'd embarrass the whole family. I give you three bucks for it. Oh my God. <laughs> He's not our legal father. Then he wouldn't pay 50 cents for the rope. I got rope in the trunk. <laughs> Your kid's been taking that rope again! Oh yeah, we wait until you and mom fall asleep. We get those car keys, we open that trunk, we get that rope, we got enough up in our room to hang the whole neighborhood! You had to hold it on. Do you ever have to do that? <laughs> hold the tree, your hand is frozen. <laughs> You're kicking at your brother, let go of yours. <laughs> Louis kicking me. Ah, my legs are spasm. It's a spasm in my leg. It's freezing or something. <laughs> Get that tree home. Give me a saw out of the garage. Get that stand in the basement. Oh, God. You mean the stand that came over on the Mayflower? <laughs> That's good. It's a good, that thing's been handed down generation after generation. When I was a kid, we didn't have stands. We had to take turn holding that tray. <laughs> I used to have sap all over my hands. Yeah, and it went to your head, too, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he saw in that tree for hours. I'll get this. I'll help. I'll get this. Give me a butcher knife! <laughs> He'd work on that tree for hours. Every year, the same thing. he put in that stand every year. <laughs> Dan, it's crooked! Put it by the TV. No one will notice. For 35 bucks, that thing should dance. <laughs> My dad actually said that. <laughs> the only fun part is giving the presents. Everybody loves that, don't they? Hey, did you ever get your dad something you already had? You know? I mean, something that he already owned. I mean, something that was his. <laughs> Here, we got this for you, Dad. <sighs> I've been looking for these tools. Well, you're gonna go crazy. There's rope in that package. <laughs> that's right. Say that box, that's a good box. <laughs> Can't get boxes like that anymore. <laughs> you ever been with your dad when he embarrasses you like that? Go over in that trash and get that box there for me. I was getting this box. You're throwing it out, were you? Well, that is a good box. So embarrassing. My mom's worse. We're driving down the freeway. She pulls over and goes, what are you doing? There's a shoe in the road. Yeah. It's a good shoe. Get it. <laughs> so I'm out dodging Winnebago's, you know? Or are they dodging me? <laughs> My dad loved his tools. Anybody else have a dad who loved his tools? Yeah. He show them to you. Look at that wrench. <laughs> Yeah, 
never see a wrench like that. Huh? It's beautiful, Father. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't want you kids touching these things when I'm not around. Yeah, you shouldn't have told us then. <laughs> That's like the go-ahead, isn't it? Is he driving away? Good. I'm touching the tools! <laughs> he can't even see me. Chris and Rich, how are you? And my dad could fix anything, especially if it worked. <laughs> Give me that radio over there. And I'll be able to pick up Hong Kong with this thing when I'm done. <laughs> uh, unplug it! Are you trying to kill me? I got war buddies over there in Hong Kong, you know. That's right, a lot of my buddies staying on over there. Call them up right now, could invade anywhere. They're all good buddies of mine. I tell you, I was in World War I, World War II, World War III, everything, Korea, everywhere. You never knew if this was true. You'd always have to look to your mom for the truth. <laughs> World War II. Whenever my dad would start working on something, my mom would come around and do that babbling. She'd hover around him. And do that. Well, we all went down to Woolworths, and I was able to find some of that junk jewelry I've been looking for. <laughs> and then I got that hat for Janet's daughter. And then we went over to the Red Owl, and I got a three-pound roast. No fat on it at all. You wouldn't believe it. Then I found these radishes, as red as a fire engine. You wouldn't believe it. About this big. You know how you like them? You dunk them in the salt, you eat them, you make that crunchy thing. I just love that. And then I was driving the car, and I was going up a hill, and it took, 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 took. I think you're using that cheap. Shut up! <laughs> no wonder I'm going nuts! And your mom wouldn't shut up. She's really hurt, in fact. She, she'd kind of trail off, you know. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Tell me to shut up. <laughs> I raised 11 damn children. <laughs> I'll burn that damn roast. Huh? My mother was right about you. <laughs> you ever stick up for your mom? And the, hey, Dad, that was out of line. <laughs> Listen, pal, you shut up, too. <laughs> Tell me this. <laughs> I'll eat that roast. You'll never see those tools again. <laughs> well, Grandma was right about you anyways. <laughs> you stick up for your mom in those situations if your dad's not too close. <laughs> My dad would wake us up in the morning. My mom would try. Mom's always tried, you know what I'm saying? Come on now, get up. Come on now, it's 700 times. I'm only gonna count to a thousand. <laughs> Your dad, it doesn't take much, does it? Why didn't you wake me? <laughs> Do you ever get up and get dressed and sit back down in your bed <laughs> and try to stay awake? <laughs> You wake up, your hair's all like this. Huh? Oh, God, I can't go to school like this. <laughs> if you're late, you know what I hated getting a ride from my dad? Oh, God. I'd rather walk in 40 degree below zero. 
I hated getting a ride from my dad. Because that lecture would start when that door closed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now you think I'm going to get up every day and haul your butt to school? <laughs> you got another thing coming. <laughs> now you and I both know your mother's got problems. <laughs> And when you're with your mom, she goes, you know, your dad's not well. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is a perfect couple. <laughs> you know, I was in every war, don't you? <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, you know, they didn't have schools. I had to find smart people and follow them around. Well, you never found anyone, huh, Dan? <laughs> Do you ever notice how we are really kids inside? We try to deny it and change it and become adults and have kids and boss them around. And, but we're all kids, basically. And sometimes you really feel like it. You get up in the morning, you go, that's it. <laughs> you call work, hi. <laughs> this is Louie. I can't come in today. I'm five years old. <laughs> I'm not allowed to drive. I'm thirsty. I'm dehydrating. <laughs> I'm gonna rest for a minute if you don't mind. <sighs> Oh, this is nice. <laughs> this is like, this is those, like those things they put caskets on. That's what that reminds me. I hate those things. This would be a small casket for me. <laughs> He'll have to cut his legs off. <laughs> and we'll never be able to close that cover. Hey, does anybody else steal those Brock candies in the supermarkets? <laughs> Remember those exercises you had to do with your legs up like that? Oh. I hated those things. Hold your legs up there, Tubby. Oh. I hate that guy, I hate that guy so much. Now you're gonna run around the track? Oh, I can't. <laughs> I hated gym teachers. <laughs> they pressured me. <laughs> now I make more than them. <laughs> Something funny, watch this. <laughs> well, you were thinking that. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> what a cool thing to have a hole in the back of your head. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just breathing. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a good fort, wouldn't it? <laughs> Snowball fight fort. That was always fun, wasn't it? Snowball fight? I was always the kid who made the snowballs. <laughs> I'll make them. You guys throw them at each other. Because <laughs> we all have that image or that real life pain of getting hit in that ear with the ice ball. 
You know what I mean? Getting hit right in the ear with an ice ball. I don't care how tough you are. I'm going in, okay? <laughs> and even though you got hit in the ear, you'd limp. Uh. <laughs> Is that ice boy? You are in so much pain. So much pain that when you go in, your parents understand it. Even let you swear. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Didn't they hear me or what? Damn it! <laughs> you ever have your hands frozen when you're a kid? Frozen like. Like, <laughs> put them in hot water. <laughs> you ever wet your pants in the winter? You're about five years old, you know? Seems like last week. <laughs> and you're, they wouldn't, like, they get you all bundled up in that hook and ladder deal. Remember when we were kids? <laughs> You'd have to walk home. Can I go to the bathroom? No, you're all, you're all <laughs> About five houses from your house, your bladder, when you walk, go. I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> oh! Are you on joke? <laughs> That's a true story, too. <laughs> well, I had five brothers and five sisters in my family, so 11 kids. Some starved. I had five sisters. By applause, how many of you are sisters? You're the worst. <laughs> sisters can get away with anything by just going, Dad. Dad. Dad, I just killed someone. That's all right, honey. Was Louie around there? We used to bring pets home. My, my mom wouldn't let us have them. She, it's not that she like said no, but she had excuses to back up the no. You couldn't argue with. Hey, mom, can we get this cat? Oh no. <laughs> they licked the butter. What? Oh, yeah, they jump on the counter, lick it, you eat it, you'll die. <laughs> when you're trying to kill us?
Hey, Mom, we found this dog. Can we keep this dog? Oh, no. <laughs> they shed. <laughs> the hair gets in the butter, the cat licks it. <laughs> Dogs are great animals. Yeah, you leave them out for three years, you let them in? <laughs> oh, thanks. You're not mad at me, are you? <laughs> well, if we can't have a dog or a cat, what could we get? Get some goldfish. <laughs> That's a stupid pet. <laughs> Take that one there. <laughs> no, not that one. The one that has little spots on its back. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah, you get that baggy with that goldfish in it, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to throw that thing up and catch it? You took it home, you put it in a jar, put it in your dresser, feed it. Now, I didn't know how much a goldfish ate. This thing started getting big. Started waking me up in the morning. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> Get up, Lou. <laughs> Give me a jelly donut, Lou. <laughs> It looks stupid, but it works. <laughs> Next time your boss is housing you. <laughs> what the hell's a problem, boss? <laughs> Let's get a jelly donut. <laughs> Remember that time you woke up, though? And your goldfish was dead? Go over to it. <laughs> dead. Everybody, wake up! Pepper's dead! In the bathroom, we're gonna have a funeral. <laughs> Don't flush it, it's my fish. Dad said I could flush it down. <laughs> All right, throw the flowers in. You're a great fish, Pepper. See ya. <laughs> we, had, we had a parakeet once that died, that thing wouldn't go down. <laughs> Wonder, I'll get that thing down. Dad, you're killing it again. Tommy, you're in there when your eyes bug out. Pepper. And Petey. Parakeets are always named Petey. Pepper and Petey. Goodbye. Now you could have those good funerals, because you could have like blue water, different color water, little boats to send them down in. <laughs> yeah, growing up is hard. We have to, though. Somebody's always telling us that. You ever notice that? Now grow up! There's nowhere to act. <laughs> You just love, don't you love doing that? Do that to people when they say that. Now stop it. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> and I had five brothers. They were horrid. Four older. Ooh. They started when you were three or four years old. Horrible stories. You don't even know what to say. You just, you're three, four years old. Louie. See that swamp over there? <laughs> yeah. There's a monster in it. There is? Well, it's a good thing we're over here. Well, its arms could reach you if it wanted to. <laughs> it 
So for years, I had to walk way around that swamp. <laughs> so I got a little older and a little smarter and a little brother. <laughs> Tommy! See that swamp over there? Take the tape off your eyes. <laughs> That's where your real parents live. <laughs> Can't you see their eyes bugging off from there? I got scratched by a cat. Uh-oh. What? Rabies. <laughs> what are those? Well, first you'll start foaming like a mad dog. Then they'll take you to the hospital and they'll take a needle about 75 feet long. <laughs> they shove it in and out of your eye 80 or 90 times. <laughs> Mom, this is rabies. I'm going to be foaming. Then there's a 75 foot needle. They're going to shove it in on my eye. Are you on dope? I think older brothers, like, invented terrorism. <laughs> Nothing could be worse than them, I mean. They get you your whole life. Hey, don't look behind you right now. <laughs> They're always thunking you or hitting you. Stop it. that guy. <laughs> Growing up now would be different, wouldn't it? Growing up now is harder because people have to worry about things. Kids especially, we didn't really worry about that bomb hitting. Like now kids have to think, well, should I go to school? Because <laughs> you could say to your parents, hey, that bomb's supposed to hit today. I'd like to be home at least. <laughs> so I could hit you just before it hits. Let's face it, the only people prepared for the bomb are the punk rockers. They look like we're going to. <laughs> they're great, I love the punk rockers. Don't be hard on them, because eventually they're gonna have children. And those kids will find those pictures. have any little brothers named Tommy. <laughs> this is what your real parents look like. <laughs> You're gonna have a bright pink mohawk and a big spike through your head and a chain around your neck. <laughs> Mom, I'm gonna have a bright pink mohawk and a spike through my head and a chain around Are you on dope? <laughs> well, then give me some. I don't know about you guys, but when I see those punk rockers walking down the street, oh, I slow that car down. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really love all of you very much. Good night, everybody.